Let's write some PHP. We need to open the project directory from the htdocs within our code editor. So we'll need to click on the open here and then open the XM folder and then htdocs. And this is the folder we'll be using for this video. So we click on open and now we need to create index.php file. And a quick note here is that if you want your file to be interpreted as PHP, then your file must end with .php and not with .html. The PHP files can also have HTML, CSS, and even JavaScript in them, so it would work uh, pretty much the same way. The way PHP is parsed is that it looks for the opening and closing tags and interprets everything in between as PHP. So the opening tag is less than sign, question mark, and then PHP, and closing tag is question mark and greater than sign. So basically anything in this code block here will be interpreted as PHP. In some editors, you might notice this squiggly line here, and it tells you that it's redundant closing tag, which means that if your file entirely contains PHP code, meaning it's 100% PHP, then you do not need the closing tag, and in fact, you should not have the closing tag in those files. And that is to make sure that no accidental white space or new lines are added after the PHP closing tag, which could mess up your website. So for example, if I were to put hello right here by mistake, and then open the browser, we'll see hello would be printed, even though we might be processing some PHP here and then rendering some page in here, you would just add that unwanted space and unwanted uh, text right after it. So the general rule is that if your PHP file is only PHP code, then you should not have the closing tag. If you're embedding your PHP within your HTML, then you need to enclose your PHP code with the opening and closing tags. So we'll remove that for now. And let's print hello world uh, to the screen. So we're going to do that by using echo and end it with a semicolon. So if we go and refresh the page, we see hello world in the browser. And if we inspect element here, we only see the hello world and we don't see any of the actual PHP code. That's because PHP is a server side language. Even though this seems simple, it actually introduced us to three new things. Echo is what you would use to print something. Then we enclose the text within either a single or double quotes, which indicates that it's a string. And don't worry about the string or data types right now. We'll talk more about the types later. And finally, the statement ends with the semicolon. If you're coming from a Python or a JavaScript background, get used to writing semicolons because if you miss it, this is where you're going to get a parser. So make sure to always uh, have a semicolon there. There are a couple of exceptions where a semicolon is not needed. For example, if you're closing the PHP tag, it will automatically assume the semicolon on the last line before the closing tag. So if we close the tag right here and refresh the page, it will work. So basically you don't need the semicolon on the last line. This is useful uh, when you're embedding PHP within HTML and it's just a single line. In those cases, you don't need the semicolon. If you have multiple lines though, it's a good idea to stay consistent and just use the semicolons. You could also execute this PHP script within your uh, terminal. So if we open uh, XM control panel and click on shell here, this will bring up the terminal. We need to CD into our project directory, which is htdocs program with geo. And then you could run PHP files using the PHP command. So that's PHP index.php and that prints hello world right here. So you could basically execute your PHP scripts uh, in command line if you want to. Another way to print something is you could use print, which essentially is the same thing as echo. It just has a couple of differences and I'll mention those differences now. For example, print has a return value of one, which means that this expression right here actually returns value. And what I mean by that is that if I do echo and then print, what this will do is that it will print out hello world and then append one at the end because this expression itself uh, returns one. So if we refresh the page here, we see that one right here. This means that print could be used within expressions while echo can't. So for example, if we did this the other way, print echo, this would not work and we would get the syntax error. Also, you could call these like this with parentheses and it would still work. And same goes with echo. The other difference is that if you don't use parentheses and you're just echoing out text, you could actually comma separate multiple uh, words. So for example, you could do hello and then comma space 
and another comma and world. And this would basically concatenate all these three into one and print that to the screen. So if we refresh, we get exactly the same thing. You cannot do this with print. Also, echo is marginally faster than print. So I would just suggest to stick with echo unless you have a specific reason to use print. Now, before we move on to something else, what if you wanted to print something like Joe's invoice? And as you can see, editor is already warning us that there is something wrong here. If we refresh the page, we get syntax error. And that means that we just need to escape this quote in here, or we need to enclose it within double quotes. So one way is we could use backslash and that will work. The other way is we could enclose these in double quotes and that would still work. So what if you wanted to assign these to a variable? The variable should start with a dollar sign so we could define something like name and call it geo and then echo that variable out and if we refresh the page the name is printed correctly there are a few rules when creating variables in php they must either start with a letter or an underscore the letter can be either uppercase or lowercase but it cannot be a number or a special character for example you cannot start a variable with the number you'll get a syntax error but you could start with the underscore and then numbers and that would work so if we put it here that would work the other rule is that you cannot have special characters like these for example also you cannot assign a value to a variable called this and that's because this refers to the object and we'll talk about objects in later videos so don't worry about it now just know that you cannot set this to hello and as you see some editors will underline this and tell you that you cannot reassign this and if you refresh here we'll get a fatal error the variables in PHP by default are assigned by value. Let me show you what I mean. So if we have a variable called X, which equals to one, and then we have a variable Y, which equals to X, and then we change the value of X to three, and then we print Y, what will be printed is one and not three. That's because variables are assigned by value. On the other hand, if you actually wanted Y to change whenever X changes, then we need to assign variables by reference instead of by value. And this might sound confusing, but it's actually pretty simple. Also, don't worry about it too much. We'll talk about this more in later videos and you'll see how we're going to use these. But to assign a variable by uh, reference, you need to add the ampersand right here. So now Y is equal to the reference of variable X. So anytime X changes, the Y will also change. So right now, if we refresh the page, the y is equal to 3. So now that you know what variables are, let's create a variable first name here and call that geo and let's echo hello first name. And let's see what we get. And it's not what you would expect. The first name here is just being printed as is and that's because we're enclosing it within single quotes. With single quotes, the text gets printed as is, meaning that you cannot use variables inside. If you want to get the value of the variable, then you need to change the single quotes to double quotes. And now, if we refresh this page, we see hello geo. To me, however, this is not that readable. It is entirely up to you, but you will see some uh, developers enclose the variables with uh, curly braces like this, which adds more clarity that it's a variable. And if you refresh, it still works. Another way is that you could concatenate text with a variable. And we'll talk more about operators later, so just bear with me here. We can replace this with hello, and then we use a dot, and then first name. And that here is a concatenation operator. And if we refresh the page, it still works. So we have covered how to run PHP in command line, how to uh, run PHP in browser, but how do we actually embed PHP within HTML? So let's replace everything here with the basic HTML and refresh and we have the HTML. So let's say we wanted to print uh, hello world instead of this heading here using PHP. And as mentioned before, if you want to execute PHP code, you have to enclose it uh, within the opening and closing tags. So we're going to open PHP here and then echo hello world and close. If we refresh, that works. Now there is a shorter version to this, which is less than sign, question mark and then equal sign and that pretty much is the same thing as php echo and then whatever you want to echo and as you noticed i'm omitting the semicolon here because it's just a one-liner and there is no reason to have a semicolon here and that would still work 
So if you just need to print something, you should use this uh, shorthand version. If you need to process some PHP, then you need to enclose your PHP code block within the PHP opening and closing tags. So for example, you could assign a variable here equals 10, y equals 5, and then you could echo x comma y. And if you refresh, it gets printed correctly. Now you could also echo out HTML directly from the PHP. So for example, let's move this right below. And here we could print the content within a paragraph, for example. And this would still work. If we refresh the page, this is printed within paragraph because we can inspect element and we see that it's within the paragraph. This can be useful for things like dynamically generated HTMLs, for example. But in general, I would say that it's not a good idea to mix HTML directly in your PHP. We'll talk more about separating your presentation logic from your business logic in later videos. So let's talk about comments. How would you comment something out? Say that three months later you come back and you have no idea what this means. For such cases, you would probably leave comments on your code. So one way to leave a comment is using double slash and then just type your comment. And this is just a single line of a comment. The other way of writing a single line of comment is using the hashtag. If you want multi-line comments, then you would write it like this. So it's pretty much the same as other languages and you could have multiple lines here. And if you've seen something like this before, this is something called doc blocks, which you would use to write the documentation for your source code. And we'll cover those more once we move on to the object-oriented PHP. For now, you don't need to worry about it. Now, there is a couple of things you need to know about the comments. If you put the comment on the same line as your closing PHP tag right here, so if we were to put a comment right here, it's not going to comment out this closing PHP tag. So if you put something after it, like hello, you cannot expect that this would comment out the hello here. It would still print hello. Another thing to note is that you should not nest multi-line comments. So for example, if you have a multi-line comment here, you should not add another comment right here because this will result in error. If we refresh, we'll get a syntax error. So this is it for this video. We've covered the basic syntax. You know how to echo something out to the browser. You know how to run PHP in the command line. You know how to embed PHP within the HTML. You know about variables, how to write comments and so on. In the next video, we'll talk about constants and variable variables. And if variable variable sounds confusing to you, it's not. So thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.